from this to this to this let's go hey guys so a while back we made a macro keyboard together as a community on one of our live streams and in this video i'm going to show you part one of about the pcb that we ordered so this and um, so taking through the ultium design files the schematic the pcb and just chatting about the circuitry and to try to explain to you what our goal was and how are we going to achieve it and then part two will be as it was with the drone programming and the working thing um, so yeah so we went from this to this uh, if you're just here for the air update my hair can only be cut the third of march i think lockdown's been extended so let's see how i can go i think uh, it's gonna go massive uh, so if you're just for the air, air update have a good day if you want to learn more about the macro keyboard um, yeah i'll keep watching um, the github files are the links below so if you just want the files the pcb it's free available and you guys can order it or make it yourself so let's get started i realized i didn't actually explain fully what a macro keyboard is or what the idea behind it is the idea is basically that if i push one button i can set it up that this one button represents many different things so control let's for example you want to copy something it's normally control c with push of one button i can macro it together one button will represent control c so this is nice for gaming uh, for altium instead of saying tgh to hide some shelves i can just push one button and it will hide, hide my reports my pour, my pouring to shelve it um, in gaming i know kerry plays wow a lot so in wow they also have many keys to push so this can be push one button and then magic can happen literally i think um, so that's the idea of the macro keyboard so just so you guys know what it's about because I keep saying macro keyboard, I think the gaming community can call it a stream deck. You can use it as a stream deck as well. So the idea is, these keys can represent anything. So you just saw the PCB that we created. And uh, now I wanted to take you guys through the design of it, just the schematics, what we did, um, the different parts of it, and try to explain it not in too much detail, but just so you understand what this board actually does. Uh, like all our designs, our designs are available on our GitHub channel. Uh, so GitHub Plum Part 55. And there you see we've got some KiCad circuits, our libraries, um, different projects we made. But this one is in PCB Designs, and I've got a simple version. That's one I make. The advanced version with the USB-C is still coming, um, but I first want to test the, the the idea about it, and then try to go to version two. So to download it, unfortunately or fortunately, uh, my GitHub skills are not that good anymore, and you kind of have to download all my designs. <laughs> to get this file so you can just go here and download the zip and then you'll go get all our pcbs the drone um, the battery charger all that stuff so once you've downloaded it and you can open the project of called keycap micro simple design and then you'll see your design pop here on the left hand side so you can see there's different aspects of this design and it all becomes one design so i'm going to go through each sheet just to explain a bit more what i did why i did it and how I got to the end result, which is this PCB. So you can see, I showed you guys the bare board, because uh, next week, part two in this video, I'll show you populated and the programming of it. So I like to break it down into different sections, not to over, um, overwhelm anybody, just to show how I break down the design and get to this. Let's get started chatting about the schematics that we've made. So you can see the keyboard has different parts. It's got a Cherry MX, that is the buttons, the keys. That's called the Cherry MX, that's just what these buttons are called. The STM32, which is my microcontroller. At the back here, that will run, be the brains of the operation. Con receive the input from the buttons, output to the LEDs, output to the screen, um, receive an input to the microphone circuit, and the sound Intimator, <laughs> so it's just sound detection. So the idea is we're gonna have a mic here, and as someone talks while you play gaming, the LEDs will change color because, as you know, when you are gaming, sometimes you don't hear if anyone's behind you. So this is just an idea of can I pick up sound and give myself an indication if someone's talking to me. And then we needed a three volt V regulator because the STM works on 3.3 volts. And then the WS212B is my LEDs you can see here in the middle. So let's open them. So you can see the Cherry MX that I used. 
Um, so I actually broke it down into rows and columns. So it's just easier to save pins. So when a button's pushed, the microcontroller will actually know, okay, that was in row one, column one. And then th that's just how it will know. So it'll get input that row one, column one was pushed. And it's just much easier than having every single LED connected or the, every single button connected to the microcontroller. So I've got my diodes here just to make sure that I don't have feedback when I push a button that it goes somewhere that I don't want it to go, that it'll only go to a certain pin that we need. So when I push this button, it's row two, column two. And by the program looking at this, I know exactly which button is pushed. And then my STM32 F103 circuit. So to be honest guys, this was just basically used from the blue pull um, that you can buy as a dev kit. So they make the design available. So I just use that as a reference. So you can see I've got my decoupling capacitors. So as you know, decoupling capacitors are just there to, to keep the voltage stable. If there's any volt dip, it will know. I've got my USB so I can program it. It's very important to know that I first need to upload a bootloader before I can use my USB, but we'll get there. There's two oscillators, uh, a reset. So it's pretty similar to the ESP32 that we did together. Um, it's just a microcontroller with inputs and outputs. And then I squared C because I'm going to use I squared C for the LED display. And as you know, I squared C always has pull up resistors. And you can also see I made it in such a way that I can reuse the sheet. So if I ever want to do a project on STM32 STM again, I just copy the sheet, take it over to my new project, and I always have it. I never have to redraw this ever again by using these ports. I will make more videos explaining ports in the future. And the sound. Intimidator. I don't know why I called it that, to be honest with you. I think it was just a no name on the internet, but it's a sound detector. Um, so I use an op amp, a very common one, LM3C86. I'm not going to go too much in detail of the circuit now. I'm going to make a separate video that will be part of us, our Let's Learn Circuit series, uh, where I go in more detail about circuits so you can understand it. So, but basically, I've got a microphone here. And I give it some power, but because this is DC, my microphone's AC, I have a capacitor in series that will block the DC. Um, but yes, yeah, so basically it just takes the input, amplifies it, that's what it does. You can read a bit more at the bottom. So I've got different gains, and then at the output, this will go to my STM32. And when I pick up any sound, depending on the threshold, I can make my program do something dependent on that, right? So this is an analog volt, a voltage that will go to an analog input of the Arduino, STM32, ESP32, it doesn't matter. So this is the idea behind this. And then I have my trusty 3 volt regulator. So yeah, because I copied it over from a previous design, you still see it be bad. But I actually will just use my USB to power this. So there will be no battery in this design. So I've got my voltage input, which will be 5 volts for USB and 3.3 volts output. A little LED here to show if there's any power. And then my LED strings. So important for the WS2, <laughs> WS2182. Always have a 100 ohm resistor in series. Uh, I give it a voltage 5 volts on top ground at the bottom and then I just daisy chain it out in out in I've got my decoupling capacitors and that will be as close as possible to the LEDs again I make use of ports so that I can just copy this sheet if I ever want to use it again what I mean by that is when I look at the bigger picture so this is my main sheet I can see my sheets here that are displayed here so here's my SMT32 with all the I opens and here's my Cherry MX and you can see I just connect my rows to a certain pin, my column to a certain pin, making use of nets so I don't have to take a whole wire across to the other side. So when I push a button, then it will know exactly where I am in the array or the matrix. Again, there's my sound <laughs> intimator, sound detector. Just have to supply voltage and then the output will go to my SMG32. V bus, like I mentioned, my USB will power this and then 3v3 will come out and 3v3 will go to my STM32 microcontroller. I added this because like I mentioned previously you first have to 
put the bootloader on before you can USB. So I use this, so with uh, SD link, I'll update the bootloader and then I'll be able to program with the USB, I hope. And then we just added an extra LED out DNX. So this is on the PCB, just an extra connector. The idea is, so it's this. So the idea is if you want to have LED strips behind your PC, this can actually power and program the LED strips just to get some extra light in the ambiance of your computer room or wherever you're gaming. Some test points. This is the LEDs on the board. Um, these are these LEDs that's in the gaps. So when there's gaps on, hopefully the light looks quite nice. And then I've got my USB uh, NP that's being able to program. Here's the external, what I spoke about for the lights at the back of your PC. And then my OLED display will just be soldered on. This is a board art solution. So I'll just solder it on and I can display some text on there. On the routing front, it was not too complicated because I had quite a lot of space. So what I actually just did um, out of interest sake is, okay, I made holes for the mounting because we're gonna 3D print our housing so we can just put it, so you can have it next to your PC and use it as is. Um, another important or interesting thing that I don't speak about a lot is we speak about this mechanical outline that should never touch. But Altium is quite good with the height that I mentioned in our previous videos before. So you can see, actually, it's not touching. So um, it can be there. That's why it's important when you create your pro, um, part, like we discussed in our video where we create footprints and schematics, um, you have to enter the height. So this is where that becomes important. It will give problems if it, the height was gliding. So it's very clever in that way. So I'll just go briefly through each section of the PCB. So here's my USB. You can see I've got differential signals here that will program my program to the STM32. Also give power to the circuit. I also made, yeah, so there's my ground VBUS 3 volt 3 so I can measure test points, mic out test point. This is my voltage regulator. So this will power the microcontroller. So it comes from my VBUS. So you can see here actually that I've got my ground and bat. That is, it's not going anywhere because it is part of the polygons. Um, so it's part of my layers. So you can see my top layer is VBAT and my bottom layer, which is blue, is ground. So that's connected throughout the board. TGH. So that even though it doesn't look like it's connected, wherever you see a wire, it is actually connected. And then I've got my I2C for my LED display. This six pin programmer. So this will only be used once to program the bootloader on, and then I'll use the USB to start programming the programs. Here's my microphone pickup circuit with the LM386, my amplifier. I'm gonna solder my mic on there, and here this trim I can use to play with the gain, the sensitivity. And then you can see mic out that we spoke about there. It is going to my, if we follow it, fire down, it's going to my microcontroller, which is here underneath. So the red's on top and the blue is at the bottom. Then I put my LEDs at the at, in between the keys because the idea is to give a nice effect through the keys with the caps. These are my MK, MK, uh, my Cherry MX. So you can see actually they've got two pins here for, you can put your own LEDs there, like a five millimeter LED like you can see there, or three millimeters actually. I did not connect it, I should have, it was a mistake for me. Um, but yeah, I'm not going to use it, but maybe in version 2. So you can see I've got the ground, but I've got no power to give it. And these are my scotchy dies, just protecting from feedback. If I push a button, it doesn't go somewhere it's not supposed to go. And then the blue at the bottom, this is my STM32 over here with decoupling capacitors and the oscillators as close as possible. So whatever you guys see here is on there. So with the USB, we've got a 100 ohm series pull-up resistor on the D+. Like I mentioned, this is from the blue pull. So I did not magically think about all this myself. You can look at the data sheet that will also explain it to you like this. Here's our PCB. So we just had a look on the computer how it actually looked in Altium. And this is the real life one. As you can see, it's pretty much exactly the same. So you can see our USB the mic pickup uh, circuit where we're going to solder our OLED display holes and things for the keys 
uh, the LEDs in the middle here, the WS. And then our uh, scotchy diodes for protection. And then if we turn around, you can see that is where our STM32 is with the programmer header, our 3B3 regulator. So as you can see, we just discussed on it, on the Altium program. And um, I love how it looks like the computer. So that is always cool to know that your design will come out as you, you expect. And here's the populated board. Um, yeah, so I hand soldered this, so it might not look as neat as we want to, but there you can see the USB, uh, our Cherry MX keys. They are missing the caps. I did order the caps, so hopefully they come soon. And then the LEDs in between. As you can see, it fits nicely. The LCD screen, uh, the LM328 um, for the mic pickup. And I also bought the microphone that I want to populate here and just put there. Turn around, you can see the STM32. Uh, and then the voltage regulator circuit. Don't be scared about these wires. Um, so these pads are 0402 and I didn't have 0402 uh, in my kit. So I had to mod it a bit with some transformer wires. So it's just so I can solve the 0603. <laughs> so don't be scared. We did upload it and the IC can handle the program. Now we just have to program it to do what we want. But that will be part two video. So you guys have to have to wait. Cool. Thanks for watching guys. So that was how we went from, we actually did this on live stream. So if you're really wanting in detail, you can re-watch the live stream uh, where we got input from the community and we actually made this online on, on, on the web, <laughs> the live stream. Um, but yeah, so this, so I spoke about the circuitry, why we use the circuitry, what we try and achieve. So next week I'll release the video with the code and then we'll see how this works. If you want to see the next video, give thumbs up, subscribe, hit that bell, and then be notified when I upload the video. During the week, we'll also put some tutorials on KiCad, Altium, all that stuff. And let me know in the comments what more you want to learn about PC design, electronics, and I'll try to get back to you. Um, that's what this channel is about, to help beginners get into electronics and just show that anyone can do this. Uh, have an awesome day, guys. Have a fantastic week, wherever in the world. Stay safe, stay healthy. Bye.